But what we're trying to do is take down small sections at a time. Yesterday we did 13 feet here, 11 feet across. And what we're going to do this morning, we're going to start in the section over there. And um, we're in a bit of a quandary at the moment. There is some old headstones over here. This one over here, this is a dilemma because that one's already into the ground. So we're not quite sure if it goes into the wall. It's not speaking to us at the moment. And when I say speaking to us, the stone does speak to the masons. Not with a voice, but with its size, its shape, its size, its colour, its patina, the mosses and lichens. For example, here, this stone is speaking to me right now, that it's not seen the light of day. So it's either been a packing stone, it's not been exposed like these mosses and lichens here. This uh, particular project here at Mammoth Cave is, uh, is very sensitive, it's a very special project. Um, behind us here we have a, an old cemetery here, we believe it's, it was built in the 1800s. And, um, we actually are very fortunate to have some old historic pictures uh, to give us uh, some detail on how to build uh, the, the walls that have fallen down over the years. So we're actually training some of the, the National Park Service personnel here. They've come in from Flagstaff, uh, Arizona. They've come in from uh, Yellowstone uh, National Park in Wyoming. And there's some of the guys locally here as well, and also a member of the Historic Preservation uh, Society as well. We always start off a training course with, uh, with a two-day uh, course, it's pretty basic. Uh, this particular course is a five-day course, but every course that we have, uh, all our training is built up of a pyramid. And the pyramid is 10% telling, 20% showing them what to do, and the 70% is the trainees with the hands-on. And when you're in a classroom uh, for maybe the first 90 minutes of the whole workshop and the training course, it's pretty amazing the questions. If people are interested, <laughs> then they will learn. So it's my job to make it interesting and informative as well. And it's very satisfying. And over the years, even just here in Kentucky, to see Mason start as a trainee, uh, there's people coming up now into the ranks who have been instructors or been master craftsmen. And I must admit, when I first did any training 25 years ago, I was almost jealous that the person who was training became better than me. But I had to educate myself to be proud of the fact that I had trained them. And that makes you a different person altogether. So it's very satisfying, it really is. Well, the dry stone technique okay, works on two fundamentals. It's uh, friction and gravity. The friction is actually where the stones actually have contact with each other. There's no mortar or cement uh, to hold them in place, so we'll also have the, the, just the gravity as well in the way that the stones are built. This particular project behind us here is very unique because it's some of the, the, the styles that I've never seen before in my career in uh, 30 years of working with stone. It's pretty unique in how they've actually had stones vertical, which is normally a uh, kind of taboo in what, uh, what we actually practice. But there's been some methodology in how they've actually built it here, and it's pretty interesting. So we're actually learning from the old techniques as well. But uh, one of the techniques here that uh, we're working on, they've actually put the stones in vertical uh, in the base, which is kind of um, unorthodox in most of our uh, dry stone skills today. We would actually have the stones sitting flat, where there's foundation, there's uh, flotation. But uh, over subsidence over the years, having stones vertical, the, the stones have actually slipped into the ground. So we'll do some slight modifications here respectfully and uh, hope that it'll last for another couple of hundred years. Right, when we start off in a classroom, the, the teaching process we have, um, you wouldn't believe it, but there is such a few fundamentals that is very important. We have four basic principles. Uh, one of them is the length of the stone goes into the wall. Uh, we pack from the inside of the wall, keep the stones level, and we break the joints. These four principles, the trainees go away with these, these gifts. From there, we have some five golden rules we work with. Is, uh, every stone you put in place, you make sure it's secure. And uh, you're checking your lines. You're making sure you don't go above your line. We're not using a hammer on the wall. And we're checking the stones every, every five or six stones. With these little nine little uh, details here, um, they can go away with these uh, fundamentals and they can become either good stonemasons. It might be like myself, it might start off as a hobby for them as well. You never know. Well, the interesting part, most of all, I feel with a restoration project is someone else has worked with the stone before me. And uh, I don't know if it's an old person, a young person. I, they didn't have steel cap boots and they didn't have the gloves probably uh, way back 200 years ago. So when it's a new project, it's your signature that's on the project. But with the restoration work, someone else has worked on this stone before we have. Um, so that's kind of humbling and um, 
I don't know, you do some soul searching and it's quite interesting. So it's something we'll never know actually, that who did it and when did they build it. Well, there is an element of skill there, but uh, we're going to try here, with working with the philosophy of preservation, and uh, we want to respect the old builders as well. So there's an element here that we must actually try and uh, respect the old stonemasons. They might have built in some unknown mistakes to, in their time, so we're going to try and build in some structural advantages as well. So stacking stone um, is kind of a derogative term, so there's a little bit of skill there, and uh, this is what we're practicing uh, this week here. So we're here for the five days uh, working here in this particular cemetery here. Yep, it actually started off for me many years ago as a hobby, and the hobby got out of control. Uh, 30 countries later and 38 states later, I am, I'm still teaching here uh, today. I think it's getting close to 6,550 trainees over 25 years of teaching, and uh, it's a uh, great feedback from trainees. I can learn from trainees as well. And I think at my stage it's important as an instructor and as a master craftsman to actually keep your mind open to new ideas and learn from the trainees as well. It's, it's very interesting, it really is. You're always learning. It's, it's nice to pass on the skills and it's something satisfying as well to build with your bare hands and without the modern day uh, technical stuff that we have. It's a pretty low tech uh, operation here but uh, it's going really well. It's, it's very satisfying, it's quite humbling actually to pass on all these skills the skills that we've actually used in Scotland, for example, for over 3,000 years. And here we are today, still passing on the same type of skills. And there's very few things that man or women can actually build uh, that's going to last, what, 100 years, 200 years? So it's a pretty rare, unique craft, and uh, I actually found it easy. As I said before, it was a hobby that got out of control, and uh, I just found it easy, and it's, uh, it's a passion. It's not something you can teach as passion. It's something inside and a lot of the guys I feel have got a great ability and all I do is just take off the rough edges and uh, I think they've already got the skills. Um, that's the satisfying part. I mean I've probably touched say, thousands of lives actually just through my career in stonework. And, uh, but here in America it's pretty phenomenal that people have actually trained and uh, for people to come up to you years later and uh, the passion for stonework. So I think that kind of rubs off from time to time. and. Um, but I'm just, as I said earlier, I think people, um, I can chip off the rough edges. They've already got the potential, and I think that's important. But um, going back to Scotland, it's going to be tough, actually, going back. I am um, 14 years here. I, um, I'll probably get back and feel homesick for America, actually. I, the places that I've traveled to over here is overwhelming. And uh, I think it's been a blessing. It seriously has been a blessing. But the family is pulling me back to Scotland. But uh, you haven't seen the last of me. I think um, I'll hopefully be invited back as a guest instructor or as a guest examiner in the craft or even a guest judge as well in the competition. So, I um, but no, it's been a blessing. It's been an incredible experience. It really has. Yep. Well, we've come to the end of our show, but we hope you've enjoyed these stories about how things are done here and in a few other places with our stories about... Lost River Sessions is our newest show on WKU-PBS. It takes a different approach to live music. Intimate locations and local musical talent brought together with great production techniques and vintage recording approaches to produce a beautiful musical program that makes you feel like you're there. We meet the Hat Girls, Kate Welsh and Rachel Bell, who took a fun idea about one-of-a-kind derby hats and turned it into a thriving business. And finally, we travel to Mammoth Cave National Park to find out how dry stone fences that have been around for over a hundred years were constructed and then reconstructed one stone at a time to preserve their beauty and to pass on a thousand-year-old skill to the next generation. We've learned a lot on this edition of Main Street, and we hope you've enjoyed exploring how things are done. You know, we are always looking for story ideas. Our producers would love to hear from you. We welcome any questions, comments, or story ideas. You can check us out at the address on your screen. Here you can find archived editions of the show as well. Until next time, me and the little birdie are just around the corner on Main Street. <laughs>